welcome to Carriage Hill Metro Park Riding Center. My name is Katherine and I'm the Riding Center Manager here. And today we're going to show you how we give a horse a bath. So our horse is Lena. She's a 16 year old Dutch Harness Percheron Cross. And as you can see, she's extra dirty today. So reasons why we give horses baths, um, obviously to keep them clean. If you have a gray horse like Lena that likes to lay in her poop, um, that's a perfect way to clean them off. If you're getting ready for a show or an event or a parade, you want them to look extra nice. Um, you can actually bathe a horse too often, um, so if they're hot and sweaty, you can just use water, but if you're going to use shampoo, probably once a week is um, the most you'd want to sh uh, shampoo your horse. And so we're just going to go ahead and get started. I've got some horse shampoo. First with when giving a horse a bath is you want to tie them to a secure location. So we've got a wash rack right here. She's um, tied with the cross ties. And I'll just start the water uh, low here on her feet. These horses are used to having baths, but if you have a horse that you're not sure how they'll react to the water, it's good to start low here. And we're just going to go ahead and just basically like giving a car a bath. <laughs> I usually avoid the head because most horses don't like their faces wet with the hose and we'll use a rag or a sponge with that. But we'll go ahead and just get her all wet. And once we've done this side, then we'll go ahead around and do the other side. Okay, once your horse is um, all wet, then you will just take your bucket with your soapy water and you can use, I've got like a little loofah, you could also use a sponge, um, they make special little sheets to wash the horses with and you just kind of start up here on her neck, you just kind of scrub that soap in. Obviously the more soap that you're using, the longer it's going to take to rinse off, but she's extra dirty today, so just kind of filled it up with as much soap as possible. Do the legs here. Just want to. We teach our uh, students to just bend at their waist um, when they're doing anything with the legs, just so you can move away if she makes a quick movement. And then I've got this little sponge here that's really nice for the legs to get those. Cause she gets extra dirty on her legs. And you basically just go from neck all the way back to her tail getting the legs and body and just really soaking her up. Okay, once you've soaked the horse, their main tail and whole body, you're gonna rinse them off with the hose. So you'll start again at her leg. Work your way up here. You wanna just make sure you rinse them really good to get all the soap residue out. We like her head done, so I'll try not to get too close to her. And if I miss a little bit there, I can use the sponge. You can see all that soap. And a little bit of that mud come out here too. This is what we call a flea bitten gray. So you can kind of see the darker spots of her pigmentation. And she actually, because she was a Percheron cross, she was a little um, darker when she was younger and she um, lightened up a little bit with her age, with her coat color. I'm going to get the whole thing here. And then I would obviously do a little bit more work with that and then the other side, the tail to rinse. So I've got the bucket now with clean water. I'm just going to come back here and then just dip her tail in just like we did with the washing. We'll go all the way up here. Some horses are just kind of sensitive with having that hose just right up here on their hind end. So this is the best way to rinse the tail really well. And then you can just let it out. And I would do that a couple times and then maybe take the clean bucket and just kind of dump it down the tail to rinse it. And if she's comfortable with it, I can also use the hose as well. Okay, 
once you've thoroughly rinsed your horse off with clean water, um, you're gonna squeegee. So this has a little rubber side to it. You're just gonna start here behind her head on her neck and just flick that excess water off of her. In the summertime, actually water can trap heat and actually make them hotter than they would have been without the water. And this is just really a good thing to do. You just kind of go through the whole horse and get underneath her belly too where the water is just cooling. You definitely want to do this in the winter time as well. If you're giving them a bath, you'd want a heated area and obviously use warm water. Um, I use cool water today because it's a little warm, but you could use warm water in the summer as well. And then once you've done the whole body on both sides for the legs, you could either use another sponge that was dry to kind of sponge the excess water out, or you can use a towel and just try to really get her legs drier so then that doesn't trap the moisture in that can actually kind of build a fungus. And we would just do both legs here on either side. She's helping. Girl. So this is Lena post bath. She looks a little cleaner. She's got the manure spots out of her. She's a little shiny. She's all um, slicked off and then she'll just air dry. And she's enjoying some grass before she goes out to her pasture.